what is Hunt the Truth? We'll start there. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Hunt the Truth is it's the campaign for Halo 5 Guardians, but it became this audio series that's uh, spread over 13 weeks uh, during the course of March all the way to June. Uh, and it really told the story uh, of Master Chief. Uh, and our, our protagonist uncovered some not so nice things about him. Right. Do we have a video? Yeah, we do. So let's, let's, let's play that, that first kind of set up right. uh, the campaign. There are reactions that every marketer dreams of creating. This looks fucking awesome. On March 29th, 2015, we got millions of them. How did this happen? To find out, we have to go back. To a time when Xbox was wrestling with a very tricky question. How do you reinvigorate a franchise that has pumped out 10 titles since 2002? Well, if you're Halo 5, you flip the franchise on its head. You introduce a new hero and make your old hero act like a villain. Then you create advertising deliberately designed to make Halo fans question everything they thought they knew. We began with a literal warning shot across the Halo Nation's bow. We launched it with a Tumblr page that featured one bullet and one word. An image so provocative that our fans hacked the Tumblr and pulled down the film it came from 24 hours before its premiere. The video also featured a hidden interactive message the viewer could discover that revealed the story of Master Chief. And just as that piece of content was catching fire, we released episode one of a 12-part serial-style podcast series to muddy the waters. In Elysium City, people just disappeared back then. One week later, on the most watched show of the year, we launched two commercials in the same program that were at once almost identical and yet total opposites of each other. All hail the conquering hero. The one who was supposed to save us all. But now I must save us from you. You've completed your mission, Spartan Locke. Mine is just beginning. Then we sat back and watched as the internet exploded. We generated these news stories, and fans went crazy, which leads us right back to these guys. Yeah, There are reactions that every marketer dreams of creating. It worked. Yeah, so, so show of hands, who knows who Master Chief is in the audience? Or there's don't. So Master Chief is basically the, the hero of Halo. He's the Boy Scout. He's invincible. And so what we were trying to do here is really call into question everything you've ever, th everything you ever thought you knew about Halo and really question you know, Master Chief and, and whether or not he was a good guy still and kind of flip that on, on the head. So, so that, that was kind of the, the idea here. It was really about creating that symbol of reevaluation for this franchise because we needed to really jar gamers from their complacency to think that this isn't just another Halo game. Um, this is one to pay attention to. And so the, the ask that came to us was, hey, we've got this, uh, this, this teaser coming out and then a week later these two commercials. We need something to fill that week some content to support it, to, to connect the stories, and uh, get fans really excited. And this is, this is back in March. So the game launches in October. We're talk we've got a long ways to go. Um, and so I s actually saw the, the bullet teaser. Someone showed it to me. And I was like, I mean, as a, someone who's played Halo from the beginning, I was like, what the, you know, what, why, who's shooting Master Chief? Why is he a traitor? I had all these questions. And immediately, you know, I was also listening, and a lot of us were at Eisenberg to Serial, the podcast at that point. And uh, they just kind of connected, and it was like, we need to do an audio series, something that can be in the, in the world and that can tell this story of, of the words and the bullet. Now, from there, it exploded into, uh, as, we, as we brought the idea to you guys, um, I think you guys connected with it as well, and then it's, it soon expanded into a three-and-a-half-hour, 14-episode, three-month campaign that it we never... It was as easy as that. Yeah, it was know, that it was easy. so easy. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you, you take a game that takes two to three years to make, and a lot of you know, focus and perfection. And we have a wonderful agency like Eisenberg who says, we've got this idea, and we want to launch it in three weeks. And so it was... Uh, <laughs> and it's going to start Keegan-Michael yeah, Key from Key yeah, and Peele. Yeah, it's going to be so really dramatic. It's <laughs> uh, so, so, you know, uh, obviously there's, there's barriers to, to making this thing right and making it at the kind of have the quality bar that, that the, the, the game deserves. Because at the same time, as this is kind of part of marketing, it really becomes part of the product. It is the fiction of Halo, and so everything needs to be really true to the brand and true to that, true to the overall lore. 
So um, how do you, how do you feel that the the podcast worked to support the the campaign creative as a mm -hmm. whole? You know, what what do you think it did for the campaign? Where you guys were trying something really you know crazy with the with the TV marketing, what do you think it did for for the fan base and for the people who? you know, have been the core followers for Halo for, for so long. Right. You know, going out so early with, with marketing for, for a game is, is challenging because, yes, we're going to raise awareness earlier on. However, you still then need to continue that engagement. And I think uh, the, the podcast was a, a perfect way to really give fans content and value for early engagement and continue to, to tell that story and kind of have this modern story uh, telling approach uh, through through the spring and kind of leading us into some of our other key key marketing beats. Yeah, and one thing that we did I think that was really fun and and I uh, you know, I think fans really resonated with was we had that first meeting with 343 who's the developer of the game and we went in with some ideas and immediately they they latched on and they had ideas of their own of how we could tie it into characters from the universe and other things and, and immediately we started coming up with touch points that were pulling up the the key art from Halo 2 or a commercial from Halo 3 and and folding them into the story where it made all of the marketing campaigns Halo's ever done connected and made it this one big universe of It was all of perfectly story planned. Yeah. It, was, yes. it really was, yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think, I think one of the things that, that um, the development studio 343 Industries really appreciated is that there were some loose ends in the, in the Halo fiction that they wanted to help kind of tie together and this really allowed for, for that. Um, but I think another key thing that, that uh, the podcast did is you know, the, the campaign um, tagline and hashtag and conversation that we're trying to drive is, is hunt the truth and really to understand really what is going to happen in the game. And, and what we're able to do with this program is really just give answers throughout that lead to more questions. And the more questions that we drive, the more conversation that we see. And, and that's just been a, a perfect kind of equation for, for the campaign of, of continuing to be you know, thought provoking, but also driving those questions because that drives further further speculation, further intrigue, and, and uh, social chatter that way. Yeah, I think one of, the, one of the, the challenges was keeping people engaged over the course of the 13 weeks between Bullet and All Hail the Cost and E3, where there were some other great announcements, game-focused, but um, wh wh how do you think, or, or what do you think is important about the way that, um, you know, in the campaign we reached out to fans and, and engaged them with content on Twitter and, and through these other channels, how, we had all these different digital touch points you know, how, how was it for you connecting all of those and, and engaging fans where they are already sort of uh, engaging with content? You know, what was important about that? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of conversation today has been around storytelling and kind of having that, that, uh, that spine of a, of a great story and, and having the podcast allowed us to have that through our marketing. So our marketing had this great storyline. So all of our various touch points from CRM um, in our email um, uh, campaigns towards towards our kind of loyalist fans to to you know uh, smaller videos that we might uh, put onto Facebook to to even our web website um, construction kind of could could tie into these various pieces of, of the uh, the podcast so it would it provided this perfect connection connective tissue yeah so we had these great videos mm -hmm. the, those were being distributed through our channels but now we also had this podcast that was telling the story in a way that Halo hadn't really talked to fans before and in a place that they hadn't really been talked to before. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think that podcasts allow marketers to, to reach fans in a new way? Um, in, in that, you know, a lot of times you don't think about, especially when you're creating a lot of video content, how you talk to people in their cars right. or while they're reading or doing other things. We, we kind of found throughout that this was a unique way to talk to people. Yeah. Um, oh, certainly, and, and, and I think, you know, Halo, the product itself kind of, rests on this, uh, of this idea of fiction. You know, it is a, a sci-fi universe, very rich, and that's one of the, the key tenets of the brand. And so having a, a, a long form format that really uses the theater of the mind and, you know, the, the kind of a radio audio format just allows for people's imaginations to take this story to, to, to their fullest uh, uh, point, so. Yeah, I mean, I spent, you know, season one was kind of crazy, like you said, we started yeah. three weeks essentially before we launched. Right. Um, and so every week we were writing and producing the episodes almost live. Like there was some days on Saturday we were still finishing a cut. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> that was <then> now, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but what, what was interesting to me was that I, I, it made me very engaged in the content. So I was watching the social channels a lot as we'd release episodes and see people talking about the content. Mm -hmm. And they were connecting with it in a way that was I'd never seen before. 
I mean, they, people were talking about sitting in front of their computer screen like it was the 1940s, mm -hmm. and that they, they were waiting for this more than they were waiting for Game of Thrones or other things, and, and it just became this, this really personal experience for them, and I think that's, that can be challenging, and, but it, it, it's something that I think is really important, especially with a brand like Halo. Yeah. So all that being said, you know, how, how important is sort of brand, infi brand af affinity when it comes to a brand like Halo or, yeah. or other games you work on? Well, I think um, kind of two, two of the things that we've seen with this is uh, kind of frame it up this way is that, you know, the, it's clear that if you have a compelling hook, so our hook being that you know, Master Chief is potentially a villain, um, but also having a very open-ended question, uh, open-ended story, so something that, that leaves that cliffhanger moment throughout, continuing to drive more and more questions as we give, give further answers, that kind of pulls in fans that are already, you know, already hacking Tumblr to try to get to answers about the game uh, prior to the, prior to, to its release. I think, um, uh, so I think having that brand affinity and, and, and also having a brand that, that ar already stands for rich fiction really helped us. And also, I mean, I think as, as the brand is sort of being turned on its head a little bit, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. what, what is being done with Halo 5 is, is really flipping the whole, mm -hmm. whole thing. So the other thing that the podcast did, I think, was open up a new segment of the world mm -hmm. that all these people haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. um, which was a, a really unique thing because we love playing the games, we love going and killing aliens, mm -hmm. but we don't know what like the boxing coach is like as a person usually, right. or you know the the girl that she that he used to lay with the, in the grass was like uh, with and, and that kind of stuff. So we got to see a, a side of Master Chief mm -hmm. and other character characters in the world and how they feel about things, and and I I think the hope is that 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 creates a weight. So when you're playing the game, if mm -hmm. you're really invested in the story you now feel that you are protecting those people that you just mm -hmm. got to know through right. three and a half hours. Right, and, and also all of those all those characters allow us to, you know, you can probably talk to this in, in great detail, you know, bringing in even fans into this program. So there were, you know, a number of vocal fans uh, really excited about about the podcast, and, and it allowed us to, kind of the real-time yeah. production of this allowed us to incorporate that. I mean, I think one of the coolest things we did, and we I feel like we did a lot of cool things in, in season one, and we had a lot of fun, but... Um, we noticed the fans were so engaged in the content and that they were they were dying to participate. And so we, we started with some, some small things. We'd send out like little uh, boxing cards from the gym that Master Chief trained at to fans on Twitter. And those influencers would then create a video about that. What does this card mean? Why did they send it to me? What's going on? And we, we found that we were getting all this content being created just out of us sharing with people. And so we sent out the word to all the major Halo influencers there's like five or six that have pretty good followings, you know, Halo followers, 275,000 uh, followers on YouTube. And we sent the word out, we said, hey guys, look, we're doing an episode coming up where we could use voicemail messages. And we want these messages to be in support of Ben, who's the protagonist, or against him, or just prank calling him and making fun of him. And we gave them sort of like a one sheet, kind of, kind of like you would do with an influencer brief, uh, and tell them, you know, go to town, tell your fans to start creating them. And if, if they're great, we're gonna we're gonna put them in the podcast. And we got over 500 submissions, audio submissions, fully produced. These guys wrote their own scripts. They they got super into it. And in episode six of the podcast, you can hear you know 40 or 50 fans leaving messages for the, the main character of the series, who then turns around and comments on the, on those messages. I remember the in that video, there's one guy from Australia who he was uh, he got a, he got a call from Ian who who did our outreach and. And, uh, you know, he's like, he, Ian was like, hey, you know, we're really big fan of your videos. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, we watch all your videos, all your videos you make about Hunt the Truth. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, the people at Xbox, they've seen your videos, they really like you. And he lost his mind. And so he, he got his own special spot in the podcast. But, I mean, that kind of stuff, uh, re <laughs> it, really, uh, it really did a lot to help these guys um, build evangel evangelism for the, the show. And they, they would talk all day about it. We never did, you know, payments or anything like that. They were just huge fans that got involved. Right, and I think uh, related to that, just the, the number of, of professional actors that wanted to get involved. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, I mean, that was, that. that was like the most incredible thing from, from the get-go. I mean, we, we batted around who we wanted to star in it. And, you know, Keegan-Michael Key's name had been thrown around. And I've been, I've been a huge fan of his. And I knew from uh, Matt Bretz, who works at our, who was talking to Morgan earlier, who's friends with Keegan, you know, he's got a dramatic background, and, and so, and I, I, I could just tell he would nail it, and so we, we locked Keegan down, and once we got him in, people just started falling in line, and I gave, like, a wish list to my producer, 
and like one after another, they all fell. They like they all fell in place, and we got everybody we wanted from Kobe Smulders, from How I Met Your Mother, and uh, the Avengers films to um, some very famous video game names like Troy Baker and Phil Lamar, uh, to uh, Janina, and it just lists on and on and on. It was incredible. The the my favorite of all of them though is like the one you wouldn't expect. I was most starstruck by Stacy Keish, who's uh like a really he's a he's an older actor and he's been in everything. And he was the one guy I was like, Stay, it's so nice to meet you, Mr. Keish. Like I was just so like starstruck. Um, but it was great. And, and, and heading into season two, which we're about to start recording actually on Saturday, um, we got some amazing names coming through. So it's, it's just been incredible. And I think they're all excited by this idea of this audio format coming back. Uh, so I don't know if should we take some questions? Yeah. Or do you want to talk about what's coming up before we do that? With, uh, within the campaign, do you have any thoughts or anything story you want continues. to share? Yeah, story <laughs> continues. October 27th. Uh, cool. Any questions? Yeah, I, I think it was a test in that sense. Um, you know, we we hadn't been down this road before, um, and but I think it also. Um, you know, one of our key goals is obviously to be a, a very social campaign, so driving continuous conversation. And, and so from just a, a baseline metric standpoint, having, you know, I think over 6 million yeah, listeners. Yeah, it, it's over you know, somewhere over 6 million now. Yeah, uh, to, and seeing the social chatter around the podcast on a weekly basis, just, you know, achieve that goal for us. Okay, cool. 6 million. Ooh. I was wondering, uh, it's a two-part question. Uh, for Noah, have you thought at all about how, if, if you have created a genre in this kind of video category, like could you create a podcast for, say, Bleach? Um, and, then, uh, and, then, and then for Ryan, could you see um, working something like this on another IP, or would there be like a Me Too problem? Should I go first? So yes, I think you could create a, a podcast for Bleach. I think that although this has been done before and, and it was the sort of um, dominant way of telling stories back before television, you haven't seen a lot of it recently. And I think people forget that in a world where we're just constantly you know, being wowed by visuals, you kind of become numb to that. And although we, we love our visuals, um, when I'm driving my car, I can't watch the latest Transformers movie or something. So it, it, it allows me to kind of imagine what I'm being, you know, played in my head. And, and with really good sound design, which I think we have in, in Hunt the Truth, you can sort of get taken away and you, you can experience a $500 million movie in your head. And you can you begin, like when you're reading a good book, to, to imagine the characters and imagine the places and imagine what's going on. That being said, as a narrative, I think that works really well for Halo. For Clorox, narrative may not be the ideal option, but I do think in all of social media, we don't want to be just advertised to. We want to be experiencing things that are enjoyable or they're helping us in some way. So yeah, I think if there was a podcast about the 500 ways that Bleach could help me in my daily life, I'd listen. You know, like I, th I think like there's companies like Lowe's who do this really well on social, like where they, if you go on Lowe's Vine channel, for instance, you learn how to like use coffee grinds to clean your grill and it's the greatest thing ever. So I, I think that in social ex explicitly, like we want to be helped in our daily lives. We don't want to be advertised to. So I hope that answers yeah, your question. Yeah, it's kind of product as marketing. Yeah. Which I think, uh, and, and to your other question, I think um, we were already compared to Serial, you know, which was the um, kind of original uh, piece here. And, and I think what really matters is, is the podcast good or not and having great quality. And so, yeah, I would be open to it. Oh, good. I have plenty of ideas. <laughs> we're already doing one. <laughs> I know these have to be around because when I pack them in the door, are we all good right now? We got one more minute. Any other questions? Come on. All right. Chris is kicking us off. All right. Awesome. Oh, sorry. Thank question. Guys. Hold oh, on. We do have wait, one. Wait, one more. Well, I think even, yeah, even from the video that we kind of showed, there's, there's a definitely a, a breadth of, uh, of kind of demographic. And I think it, it really 
shows that you know you don't have to be you know involved in Halo before to really get into the story. And yeah, I, I also would say that um, so I, I got a there was some I don't know where the survey was, but it, it spoke to that the podcast really did a lot of work to um, to not just speak to core but to speak to mass. And, and talk to new people who would not usually listen to something like this because we, we approached it in a, in a very um, very easy to, um, to take in way. Um, and I would say that I also saw people commenting on like Twitter and stuff like that about how their mom would walk in on them listening and they thought they were listening to like NPR. And then like, you know, someone would get shot and they're like, what's going on? Like, it, <laughs> it became a thing where, where you, you got, like people started getting their families into it and like they become, it became like this familiar experience where people would sit around listening to this podcast, so. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Cool.